What's up, guys? Welcome to today's class. Super excited to be hanging out with you guys today, right here on Facebook, YouTube, all the places, all the places. What's up, guys? I see you in the chat. Uh, like always, if you guys are new to the show, type new. If you've never been to one of these classes before, I'd love to see that. Also, if you're an OG, you've been watching this for a long time. Let me pop that camera back. Uh, if you're an OG, you've been watching this for a long time, type OG in the chat. Uh, we're now 65 episodes uh, or classes, you could say, um, in since March, since we got quarantined. So super excited to be here with you guys. Can't wait to show you guys some hair techniques. Oh, <laughs> can't wait to share you guys some uh, hair techniques. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to do color. I'm going to show you some color. A new, uh, brand new kind of bow tie technique. You'll see why I call it bow tie technique. And then also I'm going to show you guys how to cut a one length uh, bob as well. So super fun. Steven, what's up? Good to see you. OG, OG. And then uh, Yumna. Good. Good to see you. Simone, good to see you. What we got? Very cool. Adele, what's up? New from India. What's up, guys? Very, very cool. Jessica, good to see you. All right, sweet. So um, let me see. I'm trying to get this uh, screen working here. One sec. Monitor. Nope. Nope. All right, restart it. All right, cool. So uh, just so you guys know, the way that we kind of work these classes is I'm going to show you guys the techniques. I'm also going to record it um, so that I can cut it up and make it a smaller YouTube video later. So if you guys are watching on Facebook, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free Salon Education. It's youtube.com backslash free salon education. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you follow me on Facebook because not only our Free Salon Education channel, but my channel, we're posting every three hours new education videos so that you guys can stay inspired and uh, keep things kind of rolling that way. So uh, very cool. Florida, what's up? And Ireland, what's up? Daniel, good to see Oh, Danielle, sorry. I'm, I'm reading quick. Danielle, how are you? Jess, good to see you. Robert, hello, welcome. All right, cool. So uh, this show, these classes are, are brought to you by my friends at MinervaBeauty.com. If you're looking for salon furniture, make sure you check them out. Um, they've got the best selection, the best shipping, the best pricing. Uh, anything you're trying to do to upgrade your salon business, check them out. Uh, MinervaBeauty.com. All right. Steven, I think Jess might be on Facebook. All right, cool. So let me know in the chat where you're watching from as well. If you don't know what to write, just write where you're uh, watching from. If you have a question during the class today, type Q and put in your question. That way I can easily scroll back and see uh, your questions in there. All right. Thank you so much. Let me turn this off. I'm glad you guys like the videos. I like making them, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I pre-recorded the color technique today. I'm gonna talk over it. If you guys have questions, I'll answer them. Um, but I wanted to be able to quickly not have to process it. Um, so I did the, the filming, editing this morning, and now I'm gonna share with you guys that color technique, the bow tie technique. We're gonna be using Joyco Lumashine. Uh, 6SB is gonna be our base. So we're going for that silver uh, look. And then we're also going to throw in some limelight, uh, pop that green color in. Pretty cool. Uh, I think you guys are going to dig it. And then we're going to cut it uh, as soon as the color technique is done. All right. And Carly, the reason we got started a little bit late, Carly ran to grab extra batteries because our batteries are dying everywhere. So good times. All right. Let me get this going. All right, there, now it's working. Things are looking up, guys. Things are looking up. <laughs> All right, where are we at here? All right, cool. Columbus, Indiana. Good to see you. India, good to see you. Uh, do you know where is Bulgaria? Yes, I know where Bulgaria is. This is going to be fun. You are correct. Let me give you a little preview of what it, oh jeez, let me go. Flip on this camera. All right, now you can see, here's a little preview. 
of that excitement that's gonna happen right in there. So it's gonna be fun. All right. All right, guys, you ready? I'm gonna pop on this color technique and we're gonna get started. So here is my video here. All right, so we're starting off with 6SB uh, and I'm putting that through into the bowl. I'm gonna mix that. I'm mixing it with 20 volume, guys, but I need you to understand this. I use 20 volume on the mannequin for deposit because it helps um, get a little extra deposit into the mannequin. But on a human uh, that had this light of hair, I would obviously just use a 10 or a five volume. I wouldn't need that uh, extreme uh, level. Not that 20 volume is extreme, but it just helps kind of push the color a little bit more in. So I add equal parts of that 6SB in the 20 volume, and then I'm gonna do a separate bowl of the Lime Light, um, super cool green color from Joyco. I think this is a newer color uh, in their color intensity line. So I make a bowl of that, and then we mix them all up. And this is cool too, guys, because I can see your questions very easily um, because I'm not currently doing the color technique. I did it earlier. Um, so I can see your chat and I can see your questions. So if you have questions, type Q, put in your question uh, as we're rolling through. Good to see all of you guys. All right, so we got it all mixed up. Um, the reason I call this a bow tie technique, and I'm gonna show you guys the sectioning here, it's a zigzag. So what I do is I create a circle on the top uh, and then I zigzag off of that circle. And then when you twist it up, it actually appears to be a bow tie. So you'll see that here, but it's basically three triangles coming off of the head. And then when you twist it up, you get this bow tie effect. Let me show you that. See, looks like a bow tie. And what that's gonna be is a pop of color. Now, you could do all kinds of things with this. Um, I don't like to th you to think that, you know, this is the only technique you can do with it. Um, this could be just like where you put your highlights, where you do a little bit of balayage. You could pop just a little bit um, lighter tone, maybe one shade lighter for your older clientele. If you just wanted a little bit of brightness to come through, um, this is gonna be on her part side. So it's underneath all that heavier hair. So it's really just gonna be exposed through the movement that we create in the cut. So I go through and I do a base touch up and this is all with the 6SB. So I'm working that through her hair. Um, I work the scalp first a little bit to mid shaft. Um, in the back, the hair is a little bit shorter. So I'll go a little bit more into it. And then I kind of peel that away and I will uh, paint it through the ends. Thank you, Carly. All right, so just continuing through. This is another reason why I like pre-recording the color technique because it's pretty repetitive throughout the uh, this part. So all of the hair is getting colored 6SB except for the bow tie uh, area. <laughs> Jess, I love that you've been doing some color classes. Finally, I missed the last class and the paid one. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. So um, I am doing color classes um, just because after a while I get a little bit bored with just doing cutting. Um, I know I say that I like cutting a lot more, but after a while you just want to be creative in a different way. So uh, we're doing a little bit of color classes. So painting this through, you can see all the way through the back and now I'll start to peel um, the hair away and I'll work it through mid shaft to ends and then I'll use a brush. So I, I use my ergo brush. Grab that here so i use my ergo brush which is this guy and i brush it through the hair and i kind of work the brush vertically um so that i don't you know pull her hair too much and then uh that makes sure that i get all even saturation throughout will you show as balayage so that's a great question so like think about this um i don't even need to show it uh, maybe someday I'll, I'll do this technique and show it as a balayage. But for me, a block coloring technique is really just creating uh, movement with shapes. So you could balayage it um, if you wanted to have that lighter feel to it. Um, and balayage is kind of built off of triangles too, right? So um, if you take each of those triangles of the, the bow tie and you actually um, balayage those triangles, you could just have a few brighter pieces uh, kind of fall off to that heavy side. So it's really up to you. And that's where you guys need to be creative in this. Color is a lot more flexible than cutting hair, in my opinion. 
Um, so you can kind of have some fun with it, change it up a little bit. Same shape, but totally different look if you change the color, the colors you're using. So now we're gonna go through this top crown area. Like I said, I created a circle in the top. Um, so I'm kind of working that um, all the way through that circle, uh, coloring all the way through pretty much to the ends. Um, just taking small slices, make sure I saturate it all. Let's see. Yes, guys. So we have some exciting stuff coming up. Uh, I'm going to be launching beginning of November. Um, and it's going to be through the app, but it'll be the Zoom classes. And it'll be the club that we've all been kind of waiting for that we'll meet once a week and we'll do hair together over Zoom. Um, and that's coming. So be, be ready. Be ready. Uh, and if you guys don't have the app, download the FSE Now app. It's... Uh, if you don't understand what I'm saying, FSE now um, at the app store. It's basically uh, a social media. It's Netflix meets Instagram for hairdressers. So um, being able to watch education, know when we're going live, and then also share your work on there, meet people, message stylists. Um, it's a pretty cool platform. So there we go. I take the ergo brush and I, and I brush through it, uh, make sure I fully saturate that top circle. And then you can see the bow tie sitting off uh, off the edge of that circle. And now I'm just coloring that underneath piece and then we'll color the bow tie section. Steven, great question. Uh, so you think you could just change the tone and it look amazing for our clients that don't want anything too much. Exactly. So uh, I'm doing this in a fun color because I, it'll grab more attention for you guys. But if you think about it, this bow tie section could be something, um, let's say we did a 6N touch up on all of the outside and then you color the bow tie 7N, 8N. Uh, and all that's doing is just popping a little bit of light uh, around where it gets heavier um, and just exposes a little bit of light. Or you could balayage the bow tie section, like I said. Um, there's a lot of options and you guys will see once I cut it and then we blow it dry, how it falls. And then you can kind of de determine you know, what you want to do with it later. Let's see. What app do you use to go live? It's a great question. Uh, I use Ecamm, Ecamm Live. Uh, I've used a lot of different softwares uh, throughout my time doing this over the last seven years and Ecamm is pretty awesome. Let me pause this right at the bow tie section. Let me rewind a little bit. Oh, there it is. So if you look right there, you can see, I mean, it's kind of a bow tie-ish at that point, but it's three triangles uh, created with that sectioning. Um, and that's really what makes it up. But when you twist it is when it becomes the kind of bow tie appearance in there. So what do you guys think? So, so far, that's the color technique happened real quick. Uh, that was kind of the goal. So I hope you guys like it. Do you have any questions? Post them in the chat right now. Let me answer them before I start the cut. Um, let's see. Daniela, is the app good for someone who wants to be a hairdresser when they are old enough? Sure. So what you would do is sign up as a student on there. Um, or just watch the YouTube videos. Um, let's see. All right, cool. Nadia says I got the app. Very cool. Thank you so much. What was the app? Wendy's asking. It's FSE Now. So right here, FSE Now on the App Store. And I'll show you guys. I'll give you a little demo, hopefully, of the app. I don't know if I have my cord plugged in, but um, I can show you guys. So if you go... Let's go back to my screen. Again, let me know if you have questions. We're gonna cut some hair in about two minutes. Um, let's see, here's FSE Now. So you can see the app. This is my profile on FSE Now. There we go. And then um, when you click these different sec sections, so here is where it says where we're going live. So we got live classes, you've got your latest classes, latest videos, full classes are on there. Um, and it's all sectioned out by hair color, style, all different things uh, throughout. And then you can also upload your work when you see it right here. Uh, who do we got here? 
So some different uh, hairdressers all posting their work on there. Uh, beautiful work going up on the app now. I'm loving all of you guys sharing your stuff on there. So uh, super cool. And uh, if you guys get a chance, it's FSE now. Um, there you go. All right, let's see. <laughs> Sandy, thank you so much. All right, cool. All right, so let's, thanks Jess. All right, so let's jump into cutting hair, guys. Let's have some fun. Let's see here. If you guys could do me a favor, I know it's Friday, uh, but hit that share button if you can on whatever platform you're on. Uh, that way we can spread the love a little bit and get as many people in this room as possible. Uh, room's a little light today. And we got, got probably about 700 people. Um, let's see how many we can get on a Friday. So just hit that share button for me if you can. All right. So here is kind of the outcome of that bow tie so far. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a one length uh, bob throughout. So the way that we're going to do this, let me saturate the hair. Just like this. And... Grab my comb and my scissor. And you're going to need a couple clips here. Bring those. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to find, she's going to part her hair on the left-hand side, and that's kind of how this green little piece is going to fall, and then the darker hair is going to fall over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to part her hair where she's going to wear it. So I'll comb it back just like this. Go back and I'm going to comb it over. So you'll start to see that um, lime light green kind of poking through. And then take a look, as you can see here, where it's just going to kind of pop. So uh, now what I'm going to do is after I've got the parting on the top, back out a little bit, a little wider for you guys. Okay. So now when I got the parting on the top here, let's just do, if you see that, that stop you can just kind of like hit one okay all right so now we're going to work so here's our parting on the left hand side and what i'm going to do is then at this point draw down the center back so i kind of shift my line a little bit so now I've got my left-hand side parting and it goes straight down the center. Now what I'm gonna do here is separate the front and the back. So this is, you guys that have been following, the OGs in the room that have been following how I kind of section hair off, you're gonna see that I like to work this hairline, so where that hairline is, and then straight up. Yep, yep, yep. Batteries died. All right, back on. Back at it. Okay, so right here, I'm going to section, I'm going to go tight teeth here, down the hairline. And what this is, this is all the hair that wants to fall in the back. And then I've got all the hair that wants to fall into the front or to the side. So I'm going to comb this up and away. I'm going to be working around the head shape. Uh, horizontal sections. So I'm going to comb this and section it horizontally and nice and tight because when I get to this section, I want to be able to work quick. So instead of twisting it all up, 
and then I have to untwist it, then I have to comb it in the right direction. I just do that right away uh, and get that over with. And then I'm gonna work the opposite side here and do the same sectioning. So high point to then finding the hairline. Right there, not quite. There it is. And now I'm gonna comb this. Look at that pop of color. So what I'm gonna like about this is doing this cut, it's like a, a very precision, uh, simple cut with a more kind of out there color technique. So for me, it just kind of makes everything pop even more. So now I've separated the front and the, and the back and all this hair wants to fall to the back and all this hair up here wants to fall to the sides and to the front. So now I can start my one length. So here we go. I'm gonna comb down. So this is gonna be straight down center back. And if you guys have questions, well, it's not free. Sakura it is free. Everything on the app at this moment is free. And this class you're watching right now is free. No reason to be sad. Okay. So now I'm going to work across. horizontal line and this horizontal line I'm going to work parallel to the whole time so I want to make sure that it is the right um and I really got to brighten that up yeah oh your mic's not on there there you go Okay, so she said could you back to back foil the bow tie to get a similar result well, it depends on what you wanted because you could back-to-back -back foil it. I just don't want you to do more work than you need to. So um, if you're looking to just get that green effect, you could back-to-back -back foil it if you needed to brighten it up and make it blonde before you color it or overlay it with color. So that's definitely um, an option. Yeah, that's good better color all right so here's what we're going to do so we've got our parting and i'm going to start my one length now with one length i don't want to create too much tension because if i pull this hair it's going to pop and release especially if there's calyx uh, in the back of the nape area so what i'll do is i'll take the loose teeth of my comb and i'll comb the hair down to where it wants to fall and then that's where i'm going to cut it so i'll then i'll determine my length so I'm gonna go right here. And I'm just gonna follow. And I'm gonna decide what do I want this shape to be in the cut. Uh, for me, I'm going to kind of just follow this line. I wanna create a line around the head. So that's gonna be uh, my guide through there. Okay, so then I'm gonna take another section of hair, grab that clip, comb across, and I'm taking about half inch of hair at a time. And I'm working that horizontal line around the head. The focus is kind of going off. Bouncing. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to slightly tilt it, uh, not because that will change the cut at all, but it will just make the hair fall a little bit more forward for me um, and kind of connect it with this hair. So I'll just tap it a little bit, and then I'm going to work this line. How 
Hi, everyone. <laughs> All right. There we go. So if you guys have questions, post them. Uh, Carly can read them to me. So um, Lenore, she says, uh, why do you do one side at a time instead of one side like to the other? Good question. Who is it? What's the name? Lenore. Lenore. Yeah. Um, so it's a great question. I like consistency as much as possible. So if you're more consistent doing that, that's totally fine. Uh, but my preference is to work the same motions um, throughout the section. So if I were to bounce from side to side, now I'm cutting this way and I'm cutting that way. Um, for me, I just like to consistently work throughout it. Um, plus, another thing that could really um, have influenced this is I've been making videos for seven years. And if I were to bounce from both sides... <laughs> I probably, I'd have to change camera angles, um, so I just don't. I, and that could be, to be honest, the truth. It's, it's that, but it's not that important. And for me, I get the, the outcome that I want. When, and there's a lot of people that do just kind of choose to start on one side and stick to it. So I think it's preference. There you go. And I'm just working through. Now, the, the beauty of this sectioning is that I'm not involving any hair that's, that's not going to be part of this hair in the back. So uh, just if I started cutting into this hair uh, right away, then for me, it's kind of like I'm moving into um, different territory. I'm working on a different part of the round of the head. So I like to just finish this back section and then work my way into it. So still horizontal around. And then I'm going to show you guys, once I blow this dry, um, some little dry detail work things that will really make this uh, stand out. David would like to know what scissor and comb you are using. All right, David. So, Carly, can you hit the Shop FSE button? So we have... Um, so I sell these, these are Mizutani scissors, um, sell them on our shop. We also have payment plans for hairdressers that, so you put half down and then you, ha you break it up over payments. Um, I like this scissor a lot. This is actually my design. Um, so you can see I got my logo on there, but then Mizutani's on there as well. Um, it comes, this is how it normally comes, um, like this in the silver. Uh, they sent this to me as a Christmas gift, so um, you can't actually buy this one. But if you wanted to, the five inch is available on our website. Um, I love this scissor for, for both dry cutting and wet cutting. Um, it slides through the hair really nice. It cuts really nice blunt lines. So um, if you're looking for a scissor, you can check them all out on there. So there's my line still. Oh. I'm gonna hit some music, Carly. Yes. I need some music in my ears. All right. So what's everybody think so far? How are we doing? You're happy? Post a hundred in the chat. You're feeling good. You're loving Friday. that line so at this point most of this hair is not quite it's reaching but there's very little uh, density so I can cut it all straight down so you can see how easy that sectioning makes everything because all this hair wants to fall here anyways. There we 
There we go. I think it was Simone who asked um, if the company the Mizutani does uh, sharp sharpening. Like, the, do they, they sharpen this? Yeah, series? on our on our website you can find uh, the sharpening and everything. So there's all the details for that. Smashing things. I'm going to give Carly some headphones here. So you can... So you can be a mix master, Carly. There you go. All right. Now we're going to cut the opposite side here. Let out my clip. I'm going to tilt the head first to, so I can get a clean section. And then I'll... Uh, put it back. But I want my first parting because I'm going to base everything off of that to be nice and clean. I'll comb the hair nice and tight up and away like this. And then I slide my clip up under. Holds the hair nice and tight out of my way. I can clearly see this line and then I can kind of follow that as a guideline. So I also when I'm in here cutting, I want to make sure that I'm kind of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm keeping my eyes level. So from a body position standpoint, um, like I'm sitting in a stool now. Um, from a body position standpoint, I want to make sure her head is level. And I want to make sure that my eyes are level. Because if my eyes are twisted... If they're off, then the whole line is going to be off, right? So so try to focus on keeping your eyes. So loose teeth to the comb, comb the hair down, no stretching the hair. And now I'm going to work this line. And I'm just using the tip of the scissor. So one of the reasons why I like using a shorter blade, because the longer your blade is, the weaker the tip is, because there's less metal up there. So it'll start to push the hair. So the key to getting a really nice line is not over cutting. So here, so I use the tip and I just work around. So now what I'll do is I'll take a look at it from both sides to make sure. Never follow that pivot point logo because it's never directly. This one's not bad, but sometimes they're not directly in the back. And then you can really throw yourself off. Kelsey asked, um, can you use the same scissor for wet and dry cutting? You can. That's a great question. Um, so... You definitely can, but one of the biggest things for me is that I like, so I use a little bit more, this is a more expensive type metal. So there's different types of metal. This is a Dama metal or Dama, Dama, I don't know. I didn't make it, but it's it grips the hair more. So with more expensive like nano powder, na geez, can't talk, nano powder metal, I can't section or talk. Um, it's grippier on the hair. It's like a softer metal, uh, which is great for precision cutting. But then if you go in um, to do dry cutting, it can dull your blade faster. So with that being said, like I don't use this scissor for dry cutting. I have a dry cutting scissor um, that isn't made with that type of metal. It has a more like a hot knife through butter feel uh, slides through the hair really well, and it's meant for that. So I use that so it doesn't dull my uh, precision scissor. That's why, so when I created th my design, like my goal was for people that, you know, can't buy two $800 scissors or whatever, um, and you can buy one $500 scissor that can do both well um, and has a really comfortable design to it. So... That's kind of where my scissor came from. So I'm cutting backhand. Somebody might notice 
uh, that I was cutting this way when I was going this way. And now I'm, oh, train. Uh, now I'm cutting back this way. I always like to push the hair the opposite direction. So pushing it from the opposite direction of where it's going. So I'll start from center, work this way. I'll start from center and work this way. Because no matter what, you're going to get a little bit of push. So just kind of deciding that I want both to push each way. Some people cut working back. It's fine. Like, it's not a big deal. Um, everything I say isn't the only way. It's just the way that I like to do it. All right, so still working horizontal. Next time I build a video studio, I'm not going to put it next to a train. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't smart. All right. So, down like this, and we're going to keep working. Any other questions on there, Carly? Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw the name of the shop or the web, the shop website up oh, again because cool. okay. someone asked for that, but. And here's another thing I want you guys to, uh, to do for me. Um, if you could send me a text so that when I go live, I have your number and I can let you guys know. I actually didn't send out a text today, though. That was, that was silly. But normally, I send out a text when I go live. And, uh, oh, yeah, put the Minerva one down. There you go. Good job. Good work. Um, but if you text me, 215-608-2612, just say hi. You don't have to say anything complicated. And uh, it'll get you, get me your information so I can text you when uh, I do these live classes. You guys, what's that? Oh, sorry, Maria says, um, can I do this cut with thinner hair? Yeah, for sure. It's a great cut for thinner hair. So the length is good for thinner hair, and also it gets bulkier because it's one length. So this is pretty thin hair that I'm cutting right here. Um, I know I'm well aware that other people have thinner hair than this, but um, you know this is thinner for sure, and it just builds up this kind of bulkier feel. And with this length, you get a, a, a heavier feel too. Like if it was longer, if it was like down here and cut, it would feel weaker. Um, but because it's brought up, like people with fine hair should really go with cuts this, this kind of length because then they can uh, kind of reap the benefits of that shorter, stockier feel to there. Because ends get weak, so. Jackie said, what about curly hair? For this cut? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So curly hair, this is great as well. I mean, obviously think about what curl would do um, when you cut it one length. So it depends on the look that the guest wants. But um, if you think about, it would have more of a, a shape that would kind of go outward and build up um, as opposed to falling straight down. So you just have to you know, kind of see what your guest is looking for. Another little tip that I, something I like to do when I'm cutting these kind of one length shapes is I don't cut it directly to the guide. So I go a little bit longer than the guide. Um, you can even see that little bit of hair because that helps bevel it a bit. Um, as opposed to going right to the guide and then all of a sudden you're kind of 
if you're cutting the guide, I mean, you're kind of cutting the hair a little shorter every time. So you just gotta be careful with that. Nice. Let's see where we're at. Jess says, um, can you please show me how tight your scissors should be? I think mine are too tight. So it's a good, that's a good thing to, to bring up, especially for newer stylists. So my scissors are always pretty tight because I spin them around. Um, so when I palm them and then spin them, if they were looser, they would come open. I also like to cut, I tend to, and this is, you know, a habit that people can build up. When I cut with my scissor, I think I push a little bit against the thumb instead of it just closing directly down. So because I do that, um, I like my scissor a little bit tighter too because it kind of pushes it together. I'm guessing it makes it work better. Um, but technically you should not push against your scissor. Um, you should just let it close and cut. So mine's tight. Other people have it looser. The golden rule is kind of when you let it go, it should kind of close to that point right there. But you can see mine doesn't really do that at all. It's pretty, it's not loose. Um, so personal preference in my mind, All right, almost done with the back here. I can't believe it's Friday already. Can you guys believe it? Crazy. Color of the Terra Eagles are green for that big win last night. <laughs> Celebrate. Uh. I know. Just kidding. All right, so now we're gonna work into the side. A little bit of saturation there. So again, remember I sectioned it this way, kind of forward at the very beginning um, because I didn't, I knew that this is how I was gonna take the sections later. So being able to kind of already have it going in the direction I want just speeds up the process. And in these times in the salon, we don't have a lot of extra time to play with. Now look, all this hair, based on our sectioning at the beginning, wants to follow the side. None of it wants to go to the back, so it's very easy to now connect this line uh, across. So uh, if you learned anything from today's stream, besides the hair color technique, uh, it, I hope it's that. Comb the hair down. I gave it some nice saturation there. Jess said, it's Saturday here. I'm in your future, LOL. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> there we go. Just cutting along. You would think that this would be like one of the easiest cuts like to teach people, but this takes a lot of um, you know, discipline because you're, you have to stay balanced and that's really the, the key. It doesn't take as much discipline as like when you start to graduate, cause now you're lifting and working with the horizontal shape, but just making sure that you have a nice balanced line is probably one of the harder things there. Just gonna continue cutting just below that guide. Not much at all though, just so you guys know, like don't go too extreme. Couple more.
So here's the other thing. When I start to move to the side, there's gonna be some hair that wants to fall into the front. So what you need to do here is section out your fringe. So we talk about this in our fundamentals class. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and I'm gonna section can you go to the overhead view, Carly? Cool. And let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. Kelsey's loving that green color. That's right. Me too. All right, so we're right here and I'm gonna be working across this fringe area to the hairline. So I wanna find the hairline on the other side. That's really gonna be the hair that wants to fall to the front. So just a little bit more. So now, this is all the hair that wants to fall to the front, wants to be in that fringe area. The rest of this hair here wants to fall to the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this fringe area here and I'm gonna totally just clip it away. And we will work on that last. Good enough. All right. So now let's go back to that. Yeah. All right. So now horizontal. What's that girl's name that has this color, Carly? Yeah, um, it's funny. Jess just said uh, it's got some Billy vibes yeah, without Bill, the yes. risk of bad regrowth. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. So. Billy Eilish. Yes, Billy Eilish. I keep forgetting her name. <laughs> All right, so straight down. Turn it a little bit so you guys can see the line. I think Billie Eilish would, would dig the bow tie technique. Now this is dangerous. I'm so far away from being level with my eyes on this part because I want to show you guys, but you want to make sure like your eyes should be both of them level. Don't take them and turn your head because once you turn your head, it'll start to create kind of a weird uh, angle for you to cut at, weird line. Probably, yeah. So I can bring the rest of this down. This haircut does, haircut. This haircut does have some layers in it. Um, so not all this hair is going to reach. Hopefully most of it really didn't want any of these layers to show up. That's kind of one thing when you're cutting on your guests. If they want this one length haircut, make sure that they don't have layers that are shorter because then it will not be a one length. There we go. Just finish cutting this line. Cool. So there we are for that. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side, which is her weaker side. I'm still going to take out the um, fringe area. So let me show you how I'll do that first because that'll help when you know how to section this, it'll help with your outcome. So if you look at this fringe area here, I'm gonna go straight from this point to the hairline. Here, hairline. And just so you guys know, these lines should be vertical, right? So the hairline is vertical right here for the most part. But I kind of aim for this point here straight up because hair is obviously not going to fall uh, angled down. It's going to fall straight down from where it lives. So I don't want to angle this line because then there's hair that's on top of it that's probably going to fall over it. So you want all the hair that wants to fall to the side, you want that to uh, 
to be in that section. And then all the hair that wants to fall forward, you want that to be in this section. I'm just gonna wrap that into the fringe. All right, Jean's question. Um, are one length haircuts not really meant for thick hair? Um, I, I don't think that's true um, because we just did, and I'm gonna put the video out soon. Uh, we just caught a live model, Chelsea, uh, yesterday. And she has super thick hair and we cut a one length on her. Um, and it turned out really nice. So um, I did do a technique that I can kind of walk you through um, or kind of give you a little preview of what I did to her um, at when I blow this dry, because I can show you what I did to kind of skinny it up a little bit. Um, so if you just stay tuned a little bit longer, you'll, you'll see that. Really important you keep the hair nice and saturated so that it's even consistency all the way through the cut. So I'm just gonna check balance here, We're good. Here, go in, start my guide. So what I'll do is I'll cut that. I took a look on both sides before I cut it. I'll cut it and then I'll turn her, take a look at her in the mirror, majorly check to make sure that this line is good before I continue through. Like there's no reason to cut everything if it doesn't kind of all match up. So make sure both sides look very similar before you move forward. Here. What happens is sometimes we tend to get rushed, especially on the second side, on the back, the back nine of the haircut. And then we end up with one side not matching up. So it's really important to just get it right the first time and then you don't have to spend all that time trying to correct it later. I do have to be honest though, I'm very excited to see this color pop trying to contain myself. <laughs> All right, a couple more sections here. I can hear somebody asking this question already and it is if your client wears a center part. Could you cut it like this and they could wear it both ways? No. If they had a center part, I would base the whole thing on that center part. So just make sure you own it. If they wanna wear it both ways, then cut it in the center with the center part. It'll still have some heaviness, but um, they'll mu have a much more success styling a center part cut to the side than you would a side part cut to the center. Cool, cool. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna let this fringe out. And it's pretty short. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna blow it dry and I'm gonna decide what we wanna do with the fringe. You guys can give me ideas in the chat if you have an idea something you want to see with the fringe, um, what type of fringe you would like to see. But, oh, coming back, coming back. All right, so I'm going to use, I'm going to use Blonde Life. I don't really know why, because she's not blonde anymore, but I like this product, so that's why. And then a little bit of the Defy Damage, which is always good. Uh, heat protectant, it's protective shield. Um, put that in there as well. Mix those two products together and then run them through mid shaft to ends. I don't really go too much on the base uh, until like the last little bit. 
They smell delicious. It actually smells like Christina. I think she uses those. All right. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to crank up some tunes. Carly's going to DJ. We'll get Carly. DJ Carly. Carly C. DJ Carly C. Uh, pumping the music. I'm going to turn the blow dryer on, which is pretty loud. So we'll turn my mic down. Uh, if you guys have questions, type them in the chat. And then um, I'll answer them as soon as my mic goes back up. Okay? Enjoy. Okay, wait, you know what would be fun? What? So this is maybe this will be a new thing. I mean, as long as you're here. That so we'll turn the music on, right? And then like you could like go here, but then you could like, you know, spice it up a little bit and you can go here. Okay. You know, just have a little fun. Cool. Don't be like, you know, <laughs> just have fun. Okay. All right.
smile. <laughs> Are you not smiling over here? Not my mood though. Not my mood. Nice. Is that your <laughs> They want they want the get it right now song and I don't think you have it on. Oh that's here. hilarious. Um it's you gotta go so like this button here. Mm -hmm. Oh wait. So that music button, yeah. you can't change it. Like when you're playing a song, you can't change it. But if you're not playing a song, then you So you hit that and then you can scroll over. So you have all of these options. So now, there you that's go. the one. But that's the one. <laughs> we'll let um, we'll let this play through for a sec, but then turn it down because I'm gonna I'm gonna iron here. Okay. All right. sweet so i know they like that song that's a, that's an og song but it's it's kind of been played too much in the radio now at this point um all right so we're smoothing now so i want to just wrap look at that chin it's like perfectly on the chin i love this uh 6sb joico color i mean it's like a smoky brown so good so I'm following the curve of the head. So when I take my iron, I come down and I give it a little curve towards the face, but not like a bend, right? So a lot of people will just bend it. Um, you don't want to do that. Then you'll get that nice soft, look at that. Nice soft polish. So a little diagonal back. I grab one of my Velcro clips. You guys bought this yet? You guys have one of these? Oh, got hair in it. Somebody asked how you get hair out of it. Here, look. Like this. I don't know how I got that hair in there. Okay, so Velcro clip is the greatest thing ever because it doesn't cr crinkle the hair uh, when you're smoothing the hair. And you can take a section. So watch this. This is fun. Even if you're not a hairdresser, this is like such a cool tool because you can take it, brush the hair back. So now you got this section. Oh, <laughs> that was like a trick. That, that might be equal to like a kickflip in skateboarding. <laughs> you want to see Carly smiling, you'll see her now. <laughs> All right. So I brush this hair back and then I take the Velcro clip like this. And I just push it into the hair and it holds it back for me. So it'll hold it in that section, won't crease anything. Uh, those are available on the shop as well. A lot of you guys picked them up. You guys are awesome. If you need some, uh, just go to shop FSE. The education is free. The tools kind of help, help keep it free. go look at that nice and smooth this is the ultimate iron for sure like just ironing smoothing it out i do want to say dyson did send this to me for free so technically i think i have to say like i have to say that so if i say anything good about it just don't listen to me but I do really like it. Just know. Just know those facts. All right. Any questions in there, Carly, at all? Everybody good? Let's see if I can find one. I hope you guys shared this class today. You're not on my friends list if you don't. Got to hit that share button. It's the price of entry. We got we to gotta grow this group. We've got a few uh, 
French suggestions. Oh, cool. What's that? Um, Kelly said, I think I'd love to see full blunt bangs or choppy bangs. Yeah. Um, I was kind of feeling the blunt, too. Man, there's some, like, short layers in this guy. I didn't realize. Shonda said a swoop fringe. Swoop, all right. A few side fringe. Oh, that looks so cool. Psyched on this. I like this. Uh, what do you guys think of it? This this kind of layout. Like the color pre-recorded. Bust through the color technique real quick and then I can get to what I love, which is cutting. But it kind of just brings something a little more to the cut, I think. So... What do you guys think? Should I keep doing this stuff? It's okay, Lynn. It's okay. Really short blunt fringe. Curtain bang. I would love to cut a curtain. Like, I love cutting a curtain bang, but I don't think this is the cut for that. Mm -hmm. I do feel like a blunt, like a blunt fringe or even a side swoop would be, would be nice. I could probably do both of those, like cut the side first. Some baby bangs. Yeah, like baby <laughs> bangs would be cool. These layers that are in the side of this are really, that's really not helping my one length uh, thought process here. Right. Over here. So I'm just ironing, I'll iron everything on the front. So this is what I like to do so I don't iron in a part. Even though she's gonna part on the side, I don't wanna put a part into it. Uh, especially for dry cutting. So I'll work diagonally back this way and bring everything to me opposite side of the chair. Then I'll go through and do the same thing on the opposite side. And that'll give me a flexibility to the hair at the root. And it won't lock me into a parting. Uh, but also, it's not even so much that I don't want, I don't want the parting to be flat in the end style. So I like to work Both sides the same. So there's that. Everything came this way. Now I go to the other side of the chair. Like that. I'm going to go back the other way. I bring everything over here. So we're going to do a bunch of detail work now to finish up this style. And we're going to cut the fringe. So don't go anywhere. To be honest, like I like the green color a lot. But I love this brown. Yeah. So like smoky looking. Do you want to say what um 
what the colors were again that you use. Yeah, for sure. a question. So, do you want to, um, yeah. So what I used was Joico um, Dimensional Deposit, which is a demi. It's a cream demi, um, 6SB. So it's this guy here. Let me go closer. So Lumashine Dimensional Deposit, um, demi permanent cream hair color, 6SB. Oop, there it is. So 6SB, so a silver, blue, dark blonde. Um, so you can see what that level six looks like. And then I use their color intensity, um, semi-permanent limelight. This is, uh, has like, is actually like when you're looking at it on the screen, it looks more greenish. It's actually more yellow greenish, um, on the packaging. So it might just be the coloring of the video, but, um, definitely more lime like in there. And I did uh, the 6SB, I did with 20 volume, but um, that's just for deposit on a mannequin head. I would probably, because the starting canvas on this was like an 8, 9 level. Um, so I would have, well, I should probably focus. Um, you guys don't want to watch me blurry. <laughs> Get some glasses. No. Um, so this starting can canvas was like an 8 or 9, probably more like a 9. So I used 20 volume just to really get that deposit in a mannequin. Uh, it tends to work the best. You guys know I work with mannequins a lot. Um, but if it was a guest in the chair and they had a level eight hair, level nine hair, I'd use 10 volume, five volume. Um, I don't I don't even think you're supposed to use 20 volume with the dimensional deposit. I think it's 10 volume, but um, don't sue me. And all right. Lynn asked how long the green will stay. Um, so in my experience, um, Joico color intensity, I don't know the lime green because I haven't put it on a guest yet, um, but it lasts like a good like, um, I should probably look that number up. I feel like that's a hard question because yeah, it like, depends on like how often you're washing your hair. and. Yeah, I was going to say probably like five washes, yeah. but you're still going to see it. So it'll just be lighter. Um, so yeah, that's a tough one. But, but yeah, I would say like if I was going to tell my guest how long it was going to last, instead of being like totally technical with you guys, I would tell my guest you're going to get about five to six washes. I would say four to five with the color being very similar to what it is. And then it's going to start to fade every wash after that a little bit. Um, and some of the color intensities, they'll come right out of the hair quickly. Um, and they'll tone real nice into the hair. And then others will, like the pinks and different colors like that, will actually last quite a while. So um, it kind of depends on what tone you pick. So I have a fun, unique shelf of layering, which is cool because it's kind of salon reality-ish. Uh, so let's, we'll go with that. Um, but you can see it right over here on this green section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go cut my perimeter uh, line first, and then we're gonna do some dry cutting uh, into the head. So right here, let's go to the back. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna tilt her forward just slightly, like I don't need it to be like, I don't want the hair to fall where it's not gonna fall already. So this is all gonna fall to the back. I want it to fall to the back. I don't need it falling forward. Uh, and then I'll use my cutting stool to get my eyes below the shape or the haircut. And then I'll use the tip of my blade to go in and cut a more precise line. And here's the deal. I don't use a dry cutting scissor for this because I want that grip. The dry cutting scissor will definitely push the hair. So I'm just defining that line. Watch is telling me to breathe. Sometimes I forget. 
think I have that. All right. Now I'm going to make sure her head is flat. As I continue cutting the line. And then this is the little piece, this is from the fringe. So I'm just gonna connect, cut through that piece now. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side here. I'm really just defining the line and not trying to push hair too much. So just working through, it's kind of hard to see. I want you guys to be able to see like the side view here so you can really see the line. Actually, if I go higher with this, Bring it into the light. Oh, there you go. Tone that down a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong way. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So I just come in here, and then so I've I went through and cut with the tip, and now I'll just use the flat part just to define that line even more. Pretty good balance in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna go back to that line, but I just wanna do a little bit of uh, side fringe work here. So here's my challenge, and this is where I would talk to my guests um, about kind of where their hair is at. When I look at this fringe, it is cut technically to go the other way. So what I would do is talk to my guests because this could be a, like a real deal thing that happens. People come in and they, they, their hair was cut the wrong direction, um, which can happen like if a hairdresser doesn't know how to cut hair to go a certain way and they just hold it over and try to cut it in the direction like where it's already laying. Sometimes it can get really heavy and bulky there. So this is kind of a, a reality situation. So the easiest thing for me to do would be to cut a nice hard fringe. I'm not gonna do that yet. I might do that at the very end just to have some fun with you guys. But um, for me, I wanna show you guys how to kind of remedy this situation a little bit because I think that'll bring a little more to you guys. So to cut a nice swoopy fringe and we're gonna go shorter. So my goal is Oh, it's. So we're going to go a little shorter because I, I want to incorporate. So I want to look at kind of where these layers hit, like that hits right there. So I want to make sure that everything that I'm cutting, obviously, is going to be in that fringe area. But then also, let's 
So we'll section that right there for now. So this is really going to be where I'm cutting, this like triangle section that goes to the hairline over here. Um, I'm also going to be cutting a little bit shorter hair. So uh, one thing that you can do is take a vertical section out of the fringe. And I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to elevate the hair just a little bit. See where I can show you guys the best. That's a good angle. Nope. I don't like that. Let's go over here. Yeah, I'm going to cut it this way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut sort of with the round of the head, but I'm not going to elevate uh, straight up in the air. I'm going to come out. So what's going to happen is you're going to be building up a slight graduation in that fringe area because once you get this is pretty much straight out from the head 90 degrees i know you can't see this yet there we go that's a little better nope it's not better i they just need to be against the yeah maybe the overhead carly i think you're right So, mm, that's not it either. Sorry, guys. You're just going to have to. I think the best thing for me to do is back out a little bit so you guys can kind of see my body position and everything. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm coming straight out from the head here. And this part here is pretty much 90 degrees, but everything back from that is a graduation. So we're gonna build up a slightly graduated line. And I want this nice and short. Short to long there. Gonna have to blow these dry. I'm gonna go here. And this is gonna come over to that point. like this. So a stationary guide. You guys are gonna have to stick with me here, this mannequin. It's gonna look silly for a sec. There's that. And I just continue to keep grabbing hair. This is where you're gonna see it look a little silly. Continue to keep grabbing hair until I get to the hairline. So over to me. So this is going to start to create that shorter kind of swoop fringe. Because all this hair is coming from further away. A couple more sections. There it is, last one. Okay. So now, let me blow this dry a little bit and smooth it a little bit so that you can see it lay better. And then we're going to cut into it. You can start to see it starting to work itself out. It's where you have to have a little faith. Any questions, Carly? Yeah, would you do the fringe the same with curly hair? Um, sort of, but no, probably not, actually. Um, I would probably do more tease cutting. You guys know uh, you've seen me do that before, I'm sure. If you're new, then just look up tease cutting on our YouTube channel um, because... I wouldn't want this much tension in there. So like this side fringe I'm really liking. What I'm gonna do is 
but it, with curly hair, it would it would shoot straight up. It would look like 80s bangs, um, which is not what I would be going for. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now connect just this hair that wants to fall here, put it in my comb, connect this piece. So you could decide to go down with the line if you wanted to. I want to match it with what I kind of have going on, like a hard line here. And then almost cut into this a little extra just to give it a nice hard kind of feel. I like that. Then come through here. I'm just gonna give this a little bit harder line. Yes, YouTube, yes, it's in her eyes. Yes, I know. Cut it shorter if you want. Yes. But this was my choice today. Somebody right now is like, they can't drive like that. <laughs> How am I supposed to drive? Oh, Bobby. wrong one. I don't like that one. Where's the one? That one. So it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm at like a, a motivational seminar or something. All right. So now a couple other things that I want to do to this side because I want to just expose. Look at that. Green. So fun. You can see it like pop through. So what I could do is a tiny bit of slide cutting if I wanted to. It's exposed enough. I think with those little layers that are on that side, it looks cool. Look at her head, it's not even. The neck, it's like, whoa. It's so hard to get these like, so your haircut looks good. Is that it? Better. All right, what do we guys? What do we think, guys? Let me know in the chat. I'm gonna put a little bit of product on here. This is a dry spray wax. And this could be worn over too. Side. I like the dry spray wax because it gives it that texture, but. It's not too heavy, which is nice. It's fun. So you can see that green pop through. And if you don't like this bang, you'll love the next one. I promise. Let's see. Awesome, awesome. What is the brand? Some I think it was Simon Simone. I can't tell. It flew by quick, but it's uh, Joyco as well. So it's the Texture Boost. Here, dry spray wax. It's good stuff. All right, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to cut that fringe straight. Bonus. I can hear you screaming at me. Here it is. So what I'm doing? Let's get some uh, some bang cutting music on. 
I don't care. <laughs> All right. So here it is. Straight fringe. I'll pick it up. Put it in the comb. Slightly elevated, not too much. Definitely get this out of her eyes. And it begins. So again, slightly elevate with my scissor. Slide the comb underneath. Wide teeth of the comb. Holds the hair steady. Kind of like that some of that green lives in there too. It's cool. Now I'm just working my way over to the hairline. Following the round of the head because if you square it off too much, well, if you don't want, if you want the blunt line, if you square it too much, what happens is uh, you get longer pieces on the corners. And once I got that, I'll go through. Not quite. It's very hard to cut this and not be in front of it. There we go. So, yeah, it's cool. I like the little pop of the green. All right, I'm going to go 360 here. Definitely fun hair color through there. Bob, and I love that, the 6SB. Just gives it that smoky feel. And then the green, obviously, is just a fun thing. But remember what I talked about at the beginning. You guys could totally color this not green and have different tones through it. So it could just be balayage. It could be whatever. But that little bow tie that we put right on the side of the circle really creates a ton of movement throughout the color. And it just pops through like it's not, it's very subtle. Like see how this little highlight comes through here? Um, that could be like the bow tie part. So it could just be some highlights uh, on the one side. You could do two bow ties on each side uh, to really throw some color in there. So the options are kind of endless on this. 
So cool. Hope you guys like it. Let me know in the chat what you're thinking. Oh, let me turn this camera on. Very cool. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks for everyone hanging in. There's quite a few of you still online uh, watching this right now. Yeah, I'll just put it there. Thanks, Carly. Uh, anybody got questions? I can see your chat now. Reminds me of a chocolate mint biscuit. Okay. Heck of a technique. Thanks. I like the name too. Thank you very much. Um, I would have liked it shorter. Yes. I knew it, Rue. I knew it. Good thing I changed it. Uh, just had mine trimmed like this a couple days ago with a bit of a fringe. Very cool. Let's see. All right, cool. I think, I think we're good. I think we got all the uh, questions out of the way. Would you, oh, wait. So, Simone, would you use a texturizing shear at all? So this is one thing I did promise that I would talk about real quick. So, and you guys will see the video coming out soon, but for the uh, thicker hair, if somebody had thicker hair uh, and you wanted to do this one length haircut on them, you could take a texturizing scissor. And what I did with uh, Chelsea yesterday, when I cut her hair, I took a V shape out of the back. So just like this. And then I took another little V shape here. And then I took my texturizing uh, scissor and I went through and just took out some of the underneath weight um, just by going through and sliding like this. And then when this falls over, it's still one length, but you took out a lot of that density underneath, which really helped a lot. So that's a really good uh, trick um, with a texturizing scissor if, uh, if you want to do that. If you have somebody with thicker hair, it's definitely good. All right. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, Adele. Appreciate it. Uh, Maureen, I appreciate that. Let's see. Thanks, April. Um, let's see. I think we're good. All right, guys. So if there's no more questions, um, you guys have an awesome weekend. I uh, can't wait to be back here. I'll be back on Tuesday live. Uh, we'll also have some videos coming out over the next couple of days uh, that are pre-done videos on uh, our Facebook and on YouTube. Um, Kelsey, you're, you're welcome. Simone, you're welcome. What type of shears you used? So all the scissors that I use, just so you guys know, are available on our shop. So shopfse.com. I use Mizutani scissors. I'll show it one more time. Uh, we have payment plans available for you guys. So if you would like to... Eh, you cover my face. Nope, didn't work thought I would get it. Anyways, it's this. Um, so Mizutani scissors are all available on Shop FSE. So if you're looking for new scissors, uh, check it out on there. And uh, that's it. Oh, this is a, it's a good going out song. Uh, what's the difference between an ergo brush and a regular paddle brush? Both brushes are ergo brushes, um, but one is a mini paddle brush. So there's the diamond head brush, which is the one I used. And then there is the paddle brush, which is a larger normal size paddle brush. Steven, that's awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so see how small uh, this is compared to what a normal paddle brush would be like this big. Um, so this is like my favorite brush ever. We sell them on the shop as well. Thanks, Carly. Um, where can I find the coloring video? Eva, it will be, it'll be on this. So just save this video because it's at the beginning of it. Bristles, got it. Have a great weekend. All right, cool. You guys enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much. What do we say at the end of the day? Uh, it's going to be a great day. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Thanks so much. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Top it, flip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Top it, flip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Top it, flip it, spray it, flip it.